Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! So, it came just a week after the Taliban announced the launch of their Afghan spring offensive. A massive suicide car bomb outside a government security building in the centre of the capital, Kabul. It killed around 30 people and injured more than 300 others. The militants have rejected the latest efforts to bring them to peace talks 15 years after the Taliban were overthrown and they say that they are trying to bog the enemy down in a war of attrition, as our foreign affairs correspondent Jonathan Rugman now reports. This morning, Afghan troops and police seemed to be firing at random at an enemy which had already done its terrible worst. A Taliban suicide attacker had set off a huge car bomb during the morning rush hour in the deadliest terrorist incident here in four years. Around 30 were killed and more than 300 injured after an explosion outside the headquarters of the security guards who protect Afghan ministers and VIPs. The Taliban claimed several of its fighters had then fought inside the building, but Afghan police said they had shot dead only one attacker. A suicide bomber came under fire from inside the building and from police forces outside who did not give him the chance to enter. He was killed. Oh. Kabul is not about to fall to the Taliban, but until they accept that, they're in no mood to join peace talks. Instead, they're sowing fear and waging a war of attrition for an Afghan capital they cannot win by force. Most of today's dead and injured were civilians. The UN says 600 civilians have been killed in fighting so far this year after an unusually violent winter with more of the same expected, given that the Taliban announced its annual spring offensive only last week. The windows and glass fell on people. Several people were wounded in the market where I was. The situation was very panicky and tense. The Taliban have grown stronger since most foreign combat troops withdrew at the end of 2014. NATO commanders say up to a third of Afghanistan is threatened by these militants, even if they control just 6% of territory. Their recent gains include much of Helmand province, once a British military zone. But though almost 6,000 Afghan security forces were killed last year, this is a war the Americans won't allow them to lose. Not in the capital anyway, a city bracing for more deadly attacks. Well, today's attack has shone a spotlight on the chronic insecurity in Afghanistan. 40% of Afghan civilians say they'd leave the country if they could, fleeing persecution, war and deprivation in greater numbers now than at any time since the Taliban were ousted. But unlike Syrians and Iraqis, the European Union classes most as economic migrants. Our Asia correspondent Jonathan Miller has been to harass in western Afghanistan, close to the border with Iran, where most begin their journey west towards Europe. And just to warn you, his report does contain some distressing images. This nexus of the Silk Road enchanted Byron and the Sufi poet Rumi, who called Herat the Pearl of Khorasan. 2,300 years ago, the army of Alexander the Great occupied Herat. Now, an army of Afghans is leaving from here for Greece. Herat, close to the frontier with Iran, is under Afghan government control. But the Taliban are all around it. In dead of night, those who've converged here from all across this country emerge into the headlights of long-distance buses. The nightly Afghan Euro caravan is leaving. So this is the place that this epic journey starts for most Afghans heading west towards Europe. For some, it'll be a long, long march through 9, 10, 12 different countries. For others, it'll end in deportation. And for others still, in tragedy, in upturned boats or in 
claustrophobic suffocation in the backs of trucks. They'll take these buses nine hours into Nimroz province, where they will then cross the border illegally and trudge across the desert. Where are you heading? Uh, I'm going to Iran from Iran, then I'm going to Europe. Do you know where in Europe you want Could to you go? go? Germany. 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 Javed said the insecurity meant there were no jobs. There's nothing here, he said. We're leaving. It, it, it's a very big risk, uh, Javed. It's a very big risk to go on this big journey. Are you, are you sure you want to take this risk? Other Afghans have made it, he told me. Now it's our turn. But those who flee are prey to smugglers. All are fleeced. And for some, escape from Afghanistan proves fatal. A little boy called Sibgatullah sings from the Quran, a prayer for the dead. Sarosh and his son Mustafa are survivors. He'd laid his sister-in-law to rest here, having paid 4,000 euros to bring her body back from Greece. Last October, he and his family, along with his brother and his whole family too, had joined the Euro caravan. The Taliban had tried to kill his brother Nabi many times. Finally, the brothers sold up and boarded the midnight bus to Nimroz. We headed to Nimroz because we were going illegally. From Nimroz through Iran was tough. I've never experienced anything like it. But while sneaking into Turkey, Sorosha's family was caught and deported. His brother's family made it through and for the next 16 days journeyed across Turkey. On the 28th of October, my brother called me and said, we're waiting to get on a boat to Greece tonight. I begged him not to go by boat. So when he said this, I got a really bad feeling. That was the last time I ever spoke to him. Pictures of the sinking made headlines around the world. After they set off, I tried calling him all night. Next morning, I phoned the smuggler. He said there'd been an incident with the boat off Lesbos. He told me they'd been rescued and would be in custody for three weeks, so it'd be out of contact. After two weeks, I got worried. I couldn't wait any longer, so we started searching online. A video clip came up which said 242 people had been rescued and 15 had drowned. Then I found a photo of a body on a beach, and when I zoomed in, I realized it was my brother. Sorosh went to Greece. This time, though, he had a visa. Greek TV featured his tragic story. Nabi had been buried in the Lesbos graveyard, filled with others whose odysseys had ended. Sorosh filmed this himself at Nabi's grave. May your soul rest in peace and may you be in paradise, he says. His brother's wife was in the morgue, but the four children were all still missing. DNA tests were soon to confirm they'd all drowned too and been buried in unnamed graves. My brother was such a lovely person. Everyone around here who knew him, when they think of him, they cry. I was young when I lost my father, but I didn't feel like an orphan because I had my older brother. Now I do. What is your advice to fellow Afghans contemplating leaving for Europe? If those who decide to leave don't have a really serious problem here, they're making a big mistake. But those who have made up their minds have made up their minds.
There are 2,000 inmates in Herat jail, convicted Taliban, kidnappers, murderers, thieves and people smugglers. Smugglers who've gambled with other people's lives, raking in vast sums on the back of broken promises and shattered dreams. Do you accept that you have sent some of your fellow countrymen to their deaths crossing into Europe? I was a farmer. Where's the proof that I was a smuggler? I hate human smuggling. I've lived a good life and done nothing that would bring a bad name to my country. Abdul Rahim insisted he was innocent and told us three different stories in as many minutes. Of course, it's natural that a criminal will not accept his conviction. Human smugglers are taking people to their deaths. They are fooling them. They are endangering the lives of our young people, of families, and killing them. Some he sent were drowned. They were in a boat. This was a very serious crime. In downtown Herat, there are lots of pop-up junk shops where people planning to escape a country which they feel has no future sell their worldly goods before they go. As a trading crossroads of the ancient world, Herat was once the place to come, to buy, to sell, to be. Now, everyone is leaving life in Afghanistan, as precarious as the city's historic mud-brick minarets, once bejeweled, now crumbling. Jonathan Miller reporting. Well, we did approach the Home Office for an interview last week and again today to ask why we are still sending some Afghan refugees home. In a statement sent last week, they told us that every case is carefully considered on merit and where people do have a genuine need for protection, they will be granted refuge. I've been getting...